Good evening. Um, it's been a few months, it's been a while now, so I'm just going to talk about Japan's game coming up against Venezuela. And if I have time at the end, I'll talk a little bit about the Olympics uh, briefly. So, anyway, the game with Venezuela, it's the first of two warm up friendlies, the other game being against the UAE in about a month's time. Um, and Venezuela are using this match themselves as a warm-up for a World Cup qualifier they have against Peru. So as a result, both uh, countries have picked their what looks to be their best teams or the best available teams. Um, so yeah, I'll get to Japan now. So <clears throat> a few things to keep in mind. First of all, not very many Olympic. Um, team players were called. Um, off the top of my head, only three. So Gonda, Yoshida, and uh, Gotoku Sakai. And uh, this is most likely because of fatigue and so on. You know, the under-23 has just played six games. So, so you know, people, players like Hiroshi Kiyotake, for example, um, haven't been called up. In attack, the two surprises, well not surprises, but uh, Ryo Miyaichi and Django Fujimoto have both been called up. Um, in midfield, Hirito Takahashi has retained his place in the squad, which um, shows that Zakaroni trusts him to be a backup, albeit like the fourth backup, but you know, he, he trusts him nonetheless. And... Most importantly, in defence, with defence, Zaccaroni has picked uh, defenders, keeping in mind that um, against Iraq, Japan won't have Uchida, Kurihara, or Kono. Which, so, you know, two centre-backs out and the right-back out. Um, so none of those three players have been um, selected for this match. And... Um, some replacement as replacements have been called in, mainly uh, Hiroki Mizumoto and uh, Daiki Iwamasa of Kashima Antlers. So on uh, on Iwamasa, um, a lot of people will be happy to see him in the national team. I think a, a lot of people, supporters of Japan have wonder why he hasn't played there more. Um, and frankly, he was unlucky to really, um, be in his prime at the same time as uh, Yuji Nakazawa and Tulio. So, you know, he's been caught up. I think that's a good pickup. He doesn't seem... I don't think he's too old. He's about 30. Um, but other than Iwamasa, Mizumoto, and... Oh, Gotoku Sakai has also been caught up. So... And Yoshida's also been called up. So whether Yoshida will play or not, I'm not sure. He might be a little bit too tired for that. Um, and if he's not, if he doesn't play, I think Iwamasa will start. But if not, Iwamasa probably won't start. Zakaroni doesn't tend to pick two tall, two big centre backs. He seems to have one big guy and one um, maybe quicker guy, more agile guy. Um, so yeah, with defence, I think. Komano will start at right back. Um, a lot of people will want to see Gotoko Sakai uh, get a full game at right back. Um, but I think in the pecking order of things, Komano is still ahead of Sakai, simply from experience, and Sakai hasn't really shown that he's surpassed Komano yet, I don't think. And I would, personally, I would prefer to have Komano at right back. At least for now. Like Sakai is still young, so, you know. But other than those guys in defence, and I will put, um, I will have put the squad in the description, I'm sure. Other than that, it's pretty much the usual sus suspects are all there. Um, Takashi Inui was not called, um, which is a shame because I'm, I'm a big fan of that guy. And yeah, with formation, I would expect that Japan will play 4-2-3-1 again. Um, if they were to play three four three, that would 
be a surprise to me just because I don't think Zacharoni will fiddle that much with things until the until maybe the um, until after qualification is secure so until then I think we'll stay with 4-2-3-1 Komano at right back and Fastmaker pick I'd say Inoha will start alongside Yoshida in the central defence as for players I wanted to see called up um, from the under 23 team um, I think it would have been good to see uh, Suzuki um, centre back in the under 23s get get a call up. I thought he was quite impressive for most of his games, with the exception for maybe the last game against South Korea. And and yeah, that that'd be about it. I don't I don't want to see players like Nagai there yet. I don't think he's really needed as much as people like to think. Um, he will be soon, but he's not quite there yet. Uh, so for Venezuela, they're like I said, they're warming up for a game against Peru. Um, they've picked what looks to be their strongest team. They came fourth in the Copa America, and fifth, and they're currently fifth in their World Cup qualifying, which would get them to the playoff match against, I think, the fifth Asian team. So, yeah. Um, the last game that they played with Japan was in 2010. Um, where two home-based teams, so Venezuela League, or, you know, they didn't pick their strongest team, basically, and a J-League-based Okada Japan side um, had a nil-nil draw in Japan. And, yeah, so, you know, there's not a lot to talk about this match. Basically, I want to... It would just be interesting to see who plays in defence, because it will kind of establish the pecking order. Um... I, th I think Miyaichi will probably get a little bit of time. Because um, honestly, I don't really see why he keeps getting called up when he's not actually playing for his club. Um, I th yeah, so... And I think um, Gotoko Sakai, whether it be this friendly or the next friendly against the, <clears throat> against the UAE, um, he'll get some time then too. So other other concerns was that Tadanari Lee is not called up because I don't he's not back at full fitness yet. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he can break through at Southampton this season. And Morimoto has been dropped simply because he's I don't think he has a club at the moment. Well, he does, but I think they're trying to sell him Catania. So you know we'll see what happens there. <clears throat> Not much to talk about. I'd like to see Japan get a win just simply because because of the Olympics. Basically, we all watched Japan lose three fairly important games in the space of four days, which was the uh, the men's semi-final, the women's final, and then the men's bronze playoff. So that was disappointing to watch, but yeah. <clears throat> With regards to the Olympics... Um, People might be a bit disappointed, especially losing the bronze to South Korea. I think, to be honest, it was to be expected because of how much the difference in selection policy really between the South Korean FA and the Japan FA. To compare it, but if you imagine what South Korea basically did, if you imagine the best 15 under-23 players Japan has which would probably include Miyaichi and Kagawa, and then add in Yoshida, Hasebe, and Honda. Have that squad of 18, and then that's a little bit more like the selection policy that South Korea had. I'm not sure it's exactly like that, but um, if, they were to win a, if they win a medal, which they did, those players get military exemption, which is you know a good two years of their careers. So... Um, so it meant a whole lot more to them, and as a result, they picked their best, the players they want to get exemption. Japan, on the other hand, um, keep a more about experience. So a player like um, Kagawa was omitted simply because he's already a full-fledged international. Um, <coughs> so when I consider it from that point of view, it's it's just really good that 
um, those players got six games under the belt. So certainly a positive experience, and I'm sure that people have, would have taken a semi-final finish at the beginning of the tournament had they, you know, had it been offered. So um, I'll talk to you after the game.